It was the beginning of 2009, the end of the Gaza war. It was during Israel apartheid week in South Africa. Anti-Semitism levels were increasing drastically in the country. And Bangani Masuku, the international relations person for Kasatu, embarked on a campaign of hate against the Jewish community in South Africa, targeting its leadership and members of the community. Look, I think it was one of the most difficult periods as a communal leader. We knew this wasn't a protest about a foreign conflict. We knew this wasn't about the Israeli-Palestinian issue. This was, this was intimidation against the local South African Jewish community. So it's a Friday afternoon in a, in a suburb, uh, it's a Jewish suburb where the where the offices are based, people are going about their business, they're trying to get shopping done, get a challah before, before Shabbat, there's a lot of shul, so there's normally quite a lot of activity. And to have this crowd, uh, really with quite considerably problematic intentions coming up in, in this area, was a real safety concern that we were all very concerned about. They bust in literally thousands of people, but it was, a, it was a real feeling of a red line had been crossed, where they had made a decision not to hate Israel, not to hate the Jewish state, but their hatred was directed at the local South African Jewish community. The, the march itself that was coming was illegal. The, the, the police didn't give permission to do it and, I, and I, as I remember actually stopped a number of buses coming to, to the precinct. We saw Bogon Masuku come in, he came in a bit later, he came with Ronnie Castro's at the time. Uh, we, he had already made very offensive comments before, we had been on uh, live TV debates where there was an incredible hatred. The verbal uh, rhetoric of what they said, the, how they spoke about the effing Jew, how they, Bogan Masuku threatened any Jewish business uh, that supported Israel would be targeted by the workers, a direct threat. Pictures afterwards, there were pictures of swastikas, there were pictures of Magandovas covered in blood. And at one point, I can remember that the whole crowd, you could hear them chanting outside the building. The real anger and the furiosity that you could hear from the crowd was, was quite scary. To not only see the Israeli flag being burnt, but to see swastikas, to see swastikas outside our synagogues, to see swastikas outside our Jewish areas in front of Jewish people. If people have a problem with the government of Israel, there's an embassy and people can go and protest out there and that's everyone's constitutional right. But to come into a Jewish area on a Friday afternoon and protest at a Jewish building because you have a problem with Israel using swastikas and uh, bloodied Magandovids, I think tells you exactly what it is that this protest was, was out to do and, and what their real intentions were. And it didn't end with the protests. Masuku started posting his vitriol and hatred online. I, together with Stephen Maggard, was the co-author of uh, the award-winning blog It's Almost Supernatural, which we started to highlight um, the bias in the media against Israel in South Africa. Kosatu's international relations spokesperson, uh, Bongani Maseku, left a comment, a racist, a hurtful comment um, on our blog in response to, to posts that we'd been publishing about the war. Um, the comment basically referenced Hitler and threatened the South African Jewish community with perpetual suffering um, unless we relented and uh, condemned Israel. And we actually naively decided to engage with um, Bongani to see if we could explain to him how hurtful his comments and dangerous his comments were. He just doubled down and tripled down on that same kind of um, racist and anti-Jewish rhetoric. This was quite a shock that uh, a member of the government, someone, uh, an alliance partner, Kusatu is an alliance partner with the ANC running the country, um, would threaten a minority community with violence um, unless they towed the government's political line on a conflict millions of miles away. And then Masuku took his hatred onto campus. Once we saw that it wasn't just going to be any old speaker and that it was actually going to be a high-ranking official from Kosatu, as a Jewish student, we knew that we were really going to be up against something really aggressive and, um, and, and something that we were going to have to handle. And when we got into the room, immediately you could feel how tense this was going to be. It was very full. There had already been a number of other events that week uh, where we had also been involved in uh, engagements and there were protests and it was already a very intense time on the campus to begin with. Uh, before even talking there was a lot of shouting of a mandla and it was turning very quickly into a rally. And then Masuku started with a lot of the threats. 
It was really um, calculated to try and threaten the people in the room, but also to give a sense that on the campus that this was not going to be a safe place if you were a Jewish student. And so Masuku was very focused and very engaged and had a mission, really, I believe. They suggest that we make it difficult for anyone, whether it's in the meeting or even in social life, anyone who supports Israel must have his life as hard as the Gaza people who are suffering in Israel. In any South African family that sends its son or daughter to be part of the Israeli Defense Force must not blame us when something happens to them. Since we started the campaign, I've been receiving several emails from some of the mentally disturbed sirens. <laughs> <laughs> Who think that we are Sorry, I'm, I'm, very, I'm doing some medical engineering answer that makes me mentally disturbed. I made it clear to them, including one from we won't, we won't shut up when we're being threatened. I made it clear to them. Your emails, however many they can be, will not stop one thing. The mighty wave, the tsunami, that is very scary. Whether it's anti-Semitic or not, it's none of my business. We needed to do something. We approached Kasatu with a view to engaging with them over the statements made by Masuku. They refused to meet. We then went to the Human Rights Commission, where we laid a complaint of hate speech against Masuku. In December 2009, the Human Rights Commission came back with a finding of hate speech against Bangani Masuku, and they directed him to apologize to the Jewish community. When Bangani Masuku refused to apologize, the Human Rights Commission approached the South African Jewish Board of Deputies with a view to taking the case to the Equality Court. When the case of Masuku came to our attention, we felt that, you know, it's an issue which we have to address as a commission because it goes to the heart of the values which conform our constitution and the mandate of the Human Rights Commission to advance equality and actually fight against unfair uh, forms of discrimination, be they racial or otherwise. You know, uh, how can someone who actually holds a senior position in the union take this position and therefore the signal uh, his defiance will be sending to the country as far as the project of, uh, you know, promoting equality in our country and, 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 and harmony in our country. We come from a terrible history and it's, it's very important that, you know, uh, we basically do everything to correct the past and build a, a country where there is harmonious existence between all the different groups which make up South Africa. In February 2017, we found our way to the Equality Court in the Johannesburg High Court. We sat for a full week listening to witnesses speaking about this particular case. And eventually, at the end of that year, Bangani Masuku was found guilty of hate speech in the Equality Court. And once again, he was ordered to apologize. We faced a real uphill battle to somehow get the court to understand that this case is not about a conflict in the Middle East. It does not concern who's right or who's wrong in, in, a, in, a, in a fight in a different continent between people who do not, do not live in this country. And what I said to the judge, five minutes past 10 on the Monday morning of the Equality Court hearing during my opening statement was, I said to him that this court does not need to concern itself with deciding who is right and who is wrong in the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. This case is not about that. And the judge immediately interrupted me and said to me, repeat that because there's something profound about that. The key thing that I had to explain was, was how um, given that the uh, things that Masifu said were generally in relation to Israel and not directly to Jews in general, then I had to make a case to the court about why I would consider that uh, to be still um, possibly anti-Semitic. So um, that was one of the key issues, that rhetoric which doesn't mention Jews, but which says particular kinds of things about Israel um, or about Zionism or Zionists could still be anti-Semitic. So I had to make that case. Once again, Bangani Masuku refused to apologize. 
Kasatu took the case on appeal to the Supreme Court of Appeal in Bloemfontein. We sat there for a day listening to more testimony and more arguments. Sadly, the SCA overturned the Equality Court case's judgment. The SCA judgment was considered to be deeply flawed and problematic according to many in the legal fraternity, and we knew that we had to appeal that decision. Eventually, the case reached the Constitutional Court in 2019, a full 10 years after Masuku had come and hurled such abuse at community members in a Jewish area in Johannesburg, 10 years after he had gone into a lecture hall at Wits University and threatened Jewish students there, 10 years after he had posted his hate on a blog. It is hate speech to malign people and threaten them for who and what they are. But it's not hate speech to malign or even threaten them for their politics. So what the defendant did was to say he, it was not an anti-Semitic comment. He referred to the Zionists and therefore to the politics of the people involved. And he was for that reason not uh, guilty of hate speech. But what the significance of the case was is to uh, expose the fallacy of that speech, disguised speech, because in the circumstances of the case, the court held that although the defendant maligned the Zionists, it really meant the Jews. Uh, that, I think, was the most important point, and I must tell you that although I also made the point, the one who made it most uh, forcefully was my co-counsel, Carol Steinberg, who is a Jewish woman and who spoke passionately. Uh, she had a speaking turn of seven minutes. She spoke passionately for 37 minutes and engaged and, I think, turned the court on that issue. When I stood up in the Constitutional Court, this packed court, half of it full of the Jewish community and half of it full of the Muslim community, I, I stood up and I, I realized that for the first time I wasn't only a professional advocate doing my best for my clients, I was there for myself too. And it was an extraordinary feeling. I had my carefully prepared notes and somewhere I had mentioned that in, in one of the, the marches uh, where offensive language was used, there was a swastika and that that was an obvious symbol of anti-Semitic hate. And one of the judges interrupted me and said, Ms. Steinberg, are you going to explain why the swastika is a symbol of hate? You've just assumed it is. And I, I stopped dead in my tracks because I realized at that moment that I had assumed that the judges would know about the history of European Jewry, about the Holocaust. But I, I was wrong. And I, I just threw away my prepared notes and I spoke about what happened. And the court heard. The day the judgment was, was coming out, I was sitting on Schwilkes. And um, just terrified of losing and the implications of what it would mean. And the email arrived and I flipped to the end and I saw that we'd won and then I did a quick read through and when I got to the last paragraph and the last sentence of the judgment, I burst into tears because the last sentence of the judgment written by the judge who had asked to explain the significance of the swastika. The last sentence says, it would be apt to end with some words from the Torah. Life and death are in the tongue. And that is not something we'd put into our argument. 
That is something she had gone out and found. The Constitutional Court upheld the Human Rights Commission and the Equality Court findings and found Bongani Musuku to be guilty of hate speech. He was ordered to apologize, and this time he did, both in a letter and it was posted on the Kasatu website. After 13 years, the board's hate speech case against Bangani Msuku was successfully concluded. This judgment um, absolutely vindicated the huge efforts, dedication and determination the board, and particularly Wendy Sev, uh, did in seeing through this lengthy process. I salute them for their courage and determination and think that all of us, both uh, locally and internationally, owe them a huge debt of gratitude.